Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're coming toward the end of an amazing series, Message to the Hebrews, and also to us. Today, receiving an unshakable kingdom. It reminds me all the way back to the prophet Daniel about a kingdom that would be established forever. We want to discover how we can be part of that unshakable kingdom. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to our team. Good to see you all again. Some faces we haven't seen for a while. Great to have you here. Also great to have a couple of our team members joining us remotely. Haiti, great to see you from South Carolina. And Shana from Maine. Shana, good to see you too. And you know, we get letters from around the world saying, we like the fact that you've added some remote team members, uh, expanding our team together. We've got a gift for you. I almost forgot, didn't I? We've got a special gift for this series because Hebrews is all about Jesus, right? Yes. It's all about Jesus. And so we're offering a special free gift for you. Just go to our website, hopetv.org slash hope SS. Click on the free gift tab button right in the middle of the screen. And we're offering a free audio book or PDF on the life and teachings of Jesus. You'll be blessed as you learn more about Jesus and can share the truth about Jesus with others. So don't miss that free gift available during this series, hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on the free gift button right in the center of the screen. We're always happy to hear from people. I was so excited when I received this email from Ben in Papua New Guinea. And Ben writes and says, I am greatly blessed by this wonderful program. It's helped me very much on my spiritual journey with the Lord, as this program is assisting me to understand the Bible and to enjoy every morning. So keep up the good work. I've just begin, begun my journey in the Adventist faith. So this program has blessed me greatly as I download it and I share it with the rest of my family every Monday morning. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Thank you all for the good work you continuously are doing so you can be a blessing to others that are beginning to know God. Well, Ben, thank you so much that you're not only being blessed by being part of Hope Sabbath School, but you're sharing what you're learning with your family members, and we certainly pray God will bless them all. Edson writes from the beautiful country of Rwanda, right there in the heart of Africa, and says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School team. Hello. He got the wave. <laughs> I'm Edson from Rwanda. I watch your program every week, and I feel more connected to the Bible through your personal experiences and testimonies. Mm. The world is heavy laden, and I pray the whole world would find rest in Jesus. Amen. I pray God will bless your ministry. Well, Edson, thanks for writing to us from the beautiful country of Rwanda. Here's one of those handwritten notes again. We get those every once in a while besides the Facebook posts and the emails. This is from a donor in North Carolina. And the donor says, thank you for such an excellent Bible class. Hope Sabbath School's been my wake up call since I found Hope Channel during the COVID lockdown. I'm grateful for the way the classes are taught, the interactive discussions. It's wonderful to be able to continue growing in knowledge, especially during these difficult times. Hope Sabbath School is such an inspiring program and the enthusiasm of the panel causes me to look forward to the study every week. Amen. 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 I'm also learning the scripture songs and I've downloaded a few. <laughs> Sending a gift of appreciation and a donation of $200 to bless the ministry of Hope Sabbath School. Amen. You know, someone asked me just recently, is Hope Sabbath School donor supported? And the answer is yes, we're all part of this great miracle. We're volunteers together being part of sharing the good news about Jesus with the world. So <clears throat> thank you donor from North Carolina, but thank you to each one. By the way, you can just go to hopetv.org slash donate or go to our website, click on the donate button, be part of an impact movement that God is using to bless the world, including Texas, where Bobby writes from, <clears throat> Thank you so much, he says, for Hope Sabbath School. I've been watching off and on for some time, 
and I've been truly blessed. You often bring new and unique perspectives to the Bible study I hadn't expected. <laughs> it's always special. Thanks for all you do, praying for continued success and Jesus soon return. Aren't you thankful people are praying for us? Amen. I'm thankful you're praying for us even today because we're praying that lives would be changed forever as a result of this amazing study, receiving an unshakable kingdom. But one last note from April in Malaysia. April lives on the east coast of Malaysia and she says, every Sabbath morning I look forward to Hope Sabbath School. I really appreciate you guiding us through our Bible study. I enjoy the interesting discussions. The discussions help me not only to understand the Bible much more clearly, but they help me to grow spiritually and learn how to apply the Bible truth to my daily life. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much for your God-given wisdom and taking time to share with the world. Well, thanks for writing to us, April. Aren't you amazed to hear from all around the world? <laughs> we know that our Hope Channel app is used in more than 200 countries around the world. Wherever you are, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Love to hear from you. Write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. But right now, we need to hear you sing a 3,000-year-old scripture song. I'm thankful my wife put a new tune to it. We lost the old tune. But it's a beautiful message. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Let's sing together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. Bless His holy name, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. Bless His holy name, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name, bless His holy name. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, this is an important study today. Not just so that we can know about the unshakable kingdom that's coming, but so that we can all be part of that unshakable kingdom. In fact, Lord, there may be someone watching today for the first time you know who needs to make a decision to say, Jesus, would you save me and let me be part of your unshakable kingdom, which is soon to come. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So may the Holy Spirit bless not only our team here in the studio and our remote team members, but every Hope Sabbath School member as we're joining together in our in-depth interactive study of the Word of God today. May miracles happen in our hearts. May lives be blessed. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're looking in Hebrews chapter 12 as we begin our study with an interesting comparison between Mount Sinai and Mount Zion. And I think we've got something to learn here. And Daisy, if you'd begin our study today in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 20 through 22. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. They staggered back under God's command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. Moses himself was so frightened at the sight that he said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. Now there's some symbolism here. Mount Zion, of course, is where Jerusalem was built. Mm -hmm. but, but there's more to it than that, isn't there? Mm. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think it means? And apparently is a lot happier coming to Mount Zion <laughs> mm. than, than being near Mount Sinai. Well, I, I just thought it was interesting, like they're talking to, about the New Jerusalem, and it's like we've come to it, but, but, but I mean, I, I don't see the New Jerusalem, mm -hmm. so what is he talking about? I mean, it seems like it's, it's um, a, a, a symbol for a new reality that we kind of have in our relationship with God and the relationship with, with um, have angels and, and just... Yeah, the, the things that are unseen. So several important things happened on Mount Moriah, which later is called Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened on Mount Moriah long before the Incarnation? Yes, Sabina. Uh, that's where Abraham took Isaac to, you know, do that sacrifice that God requested from him and where God provided a lamb so that he... The Lord will provide mm -hmm. Jehovah Jireh, right? Mm -hmm. And then many generations later, it's on Mount Zion that, that the okay. atonement is made, that the, the true Lamb of God yeah. provides a sacrifice. So why mm -hmm. is it good news then that we're invited to come to Mount Zion? Gladys? Well, it is a great invitation because if you see, you know, before it was, my, uh, you can think of fear and, and, and being outside because you're not part of, of the Jewish family. But now the invitation has been extended to all to just come in. And we've mm -hmm. got to be careful. We talked about this in the past. We don't want to be too hard on the children of Israel. They've been in slavery for many generations, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so they had to understand that the true God of heaven mm -hmm. wasn't like the little idols they were passing around in Egypt. Yes. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so the mountain shaking of fire and smoke <laughs> was certainly a representation of that. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but Pedro, talk to me. What does it mean? Give, give it to me in, in your words. What does it mean for us to come to Mount Zion? What does that mean? Well, God is inviting us to his presence. And looking at the people of Israel, they were afraid because of their sins, their condition. Mm -hmm. But in Mount in Mount Zion, we find hope, we find Jesus. Mm -hmm. he, we find Him as our mediator, and we can find joy because now we can come without trembling because we have, God has built the bridge that can uh, reconstruct that connection mm -hmm. that we have lost before uh, or uh, win our sins. All right, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make it really simple. <laughs> to come to Mount Zion means to accept the salvation that Jesus is offering us, Amen. Amen. right? Amen. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, Jonathan. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking that, um, you know, we need to change. So we have issues. We are like the children of Israel. But, um, you know, sometimes we need fear. But when the children of Israel came there, I mean, fear isn't the best motivator. And uh, God wants us, ideally, to respond out of love, sure. out of no, uh, an intimate relationship with. And I think that's part of the difference is here we have God coming down, intimately living with our lives, demonstrating love, and r connecting with us in a way that, that we, we can't get from Mount Zion. We can get a lot from, oh, sorry, from Sinai. We can get a lot from Sinai, but we need that intimate Savior. So mm -hmm. I want to give someone an opportunity. Shana, maybe you can start. I, I don't know all of your life, Shana, but, but I'd like you to do a scan and say, when did Shana decide, 
I'm going to come to Mount Zion. I'm going to say, Jesus, will you save me? Will you let me be part of your unshakable kingdom? When did that happen for you? So it was at the ending of my college years when I was officially, officially transitioning to my time of being an adult. Um, and my last year of, of undergraduate was, was very difficult. And um, I, I decided to spend some time reading God's word before transitioning into this next phase of my life. And, and reading through Jesus's life and seeing all that he experienced um, and his death and salvation that he offered for me convinced me enough that, that, you know what, I'll just accept it. And this is the way that I need to go. I should just accept what he has given for me. And my life from here on out should also reflect that I accept the salvation that he's freely offering me. So how many of you are happy that Shana decided to come to Mount Zion? That's awesome. And by the way, I was a little shocked because I thought Shana, probably she'd say when I was seven, you know, <laughs> but we all, we have to make that decision, don't we? Yeah, Haiti. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, y you know, the, our spiritual walk isn't always just a one time and that's it. For me, there have been a lot of moments in my journey I, I was baptized and accepted Jesus in my heart when I was a child, uh, but praise God I was rebaptized later in my life. I, when I was a teenager, I, I went a little crazy, but one, one time in that time when I was a teenager, I was 16, and I was feeling down, and I remember like curling up in a ball on the floor and crying, and I had kind of like a vision where I was in a house, curled up in the floor crying, and there was nothing at all in that house, no furniture, no paintings, no decorations. And I was in front of the front door of the house and it had like a window and the door was shut, but I could see that Jesus was on the other side looking at me and wanting me to open the door. But I remembered saying, I can't open the door, I'm not good enough. And a moment later, I, I heard a sound come from one side of that, that empty house. And I looked over and I saw Jesus walking towards me very slowly. And I was like, oh, he came in anyway. <laughs> and then I looked back up at the, towards the door and I saw the same loving eyes looking at me. And I realized instantly that it wasn't Jesus, that the enemy had come in. Mm -hmm. because I didn't open the door and let Jesus in. The wow. enemy had just crept in pretending to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that wow. terrified me. Wow. And I got up and ran to the door and opened it. And as soon as Jesus walked in, the enemy was gone. Wow. And the house just started filling up with like flowers and plants. Wow. It was amazing. Wow. Until eventually we were just sitting there at a table talking. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful. And that had an impact on my life that I didn't fully surrender immediately. But a few years later, like at age 19, I really did. Mm -hmm. I never forgot that, that God doesn't force himself on you. He wants you to let him in, but you have to open the door. Mm. Amen. Amen. We could end our study right here <laughs> <laughs> and just make a simple appeal and yes. say, my friend, wherever come you are in the world, the come to Mount Zion. Yeah. <laughs> and let Jesus save you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Haiti yeah. said, you got to make that choice. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Doesn't it say in Revelation 3, I stand at the door and knock? Yeah. So yeah. make that choice. But here's the imagery of come to Mount Zion. Yes. Let Jesus do what he longs to do, Amen. which is to save us and mm -hmm. make us part of his unshakable kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're going on, Sabina, to verse 23 of Hebrews 12, mm -hmm. because um, he's not only the one at Mount Zion, he's also the judge of all. Let's mm -hmm. see how that reads in your Bible. Okay, I'll be, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, and it's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, and the word says, you have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself, who is the judge over all things. You have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven, who have now been made perfect. Amen. So, we're, we're just getting this happy, I've decided to come to Mount Zion, 
And then maybe we hesitate a little bit, or maybe some hesitate, because he's the judge of all. Mm. Mm. Um, and what kind of attitude do some people have about, about God as the judge? Daisy? Fear, because we realize we're guilty of so many things. Mm -hmm. And if we look at ourselves and we look at God, we, we know we're, we, we're de we deserve to be condemned. Mm. But, of course, there's hope after that. Sure, <laughs> but that's just one part of it. But let's hold that. That's good. When I look at myself, mm -hmm. I realize that I'm guilty. I've yeah. all mm -hmm. of sinned and come short of God's glory. But there's another reason that we might hesitate, and it's because... Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, the devil wants us to believe that, you know, God is out to get us, out to catch us and you know, make us pay for things or just that, that he's not a trustworthy judge. Mm -hmm. A misunderstanding of the character of God. Shana? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm thinking to our experience with judges here on earth where a judge may find someone guilty who is innocent and may let someone who is innocent go guilty. And so there may be some apprehension to coming to Mount Zion because God is, is the judge of all. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to convict me. I am guilty, but I don't know what the, the sentence or the outcome is going to be. I think a misunderstanding of the character of God and maybe, like Shana said, some flawed human judges mm -hmm. that make you wonder whether you're going to get a good outcome. But it's really not that so much as wondering whether the judge truly cares. Mm -hmm. Now, if I read the gospel record, this same Jesus, Hebrews is all about him, mm -hmm. who gave himself for us, who intercedes for us, is also the judge. The judge. The judge. Mm -hmm. yeah. John 5, 22 to 24. Mm -hmm. All judgment is given to the okay. Son. Yeah. So what does it do for you, Gladys? To it's know like, as you walk to Mount Zion <laughs> that the judge of all is the one who loves you with an immeasurable, unfailing love. By what? the way, Father, Son, and Holy, and Holy Spirit, Spirit. Mm -hmm. love you with an immeasurable and unfailing love. It's just like Shane love. I was saying, you know, when you come to, 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 to a judgment here on earth, if you go to a trial and you know that the judge is your friend, you go in with confidence. You know you have nothing to fear because Jesus is your judge, but he already paid the price for you. So there is no fear. Mm. You come boldly before the throne of God. You're quoting from mm. Hebrews, aren't you? To come boldly, <laughs> uh, Hebrews yeah. 4, 16. Pedro? Mm. Uh, uh, I've been involved for many years in, in the legal aspects. You know, I used to serve the documents that bring people to court. Okay. And, and many times people try to evade me. Says, no, I don't <laughs> want you to come. You know, do, do, don't knock on my door. Oh, wow. uh, uh, I used to say, do to leave the, the bad news to people. But actually, it's a good news. People mm -hmm. have the right to uh, mm -hmm. defend themselves. And exactly. God wants to get that good news on judgment, that you have the right to defend yourself. And the best cases that I served was those that knew that they, were, they, they had either uh, a case for their, in their favor. They said, I want this because I know that I can win this. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus does for us. He, he says, I have mm -hmm. won this case for you. Amen. You just have to present yourself in the judgment day. Mm -hmm. So when you show up at my door, <laughs> Jesus, back to Hades vision, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus steps in front and says, I'll take the papers, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Amen. Amen. And the outcome's already settled, and yeah. I'm going to come to Mount Zion, right? And Amen. rejoice. rejoice. Uh, I don't have to fear the judgment mm -hmm. if I know how much the judge loves me yeah. and will render a Innocent, Love it. positive <laughs> verdict mm -hmm. uh, on my behalf, Jordan, uh, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, um, one thing that someone helped me think through once that I, I think confronted my thoughts on it was, I mean, if you think about, okay, not everyone's going to go to heaven, right? So if can we trust God? And and if if you look at the okay, people that don't go to heaven. As one author puts it, it'll, it's, it's not because they would, it, it's, it's because they would not be happy there. They would be there and it would be kind of this torturous experience. If you're like hanging around with a bunch of people that are loving, that are selfless, that are all these different things, that would be torture to you. So if that, if God is going to act towards me, I'll put it personally, towards me in a way that I can say, okay, I know that if I'm not going to be in heaven, 
that is the choice of a loving God, and I can trust that. If I can trust that God might know that maybe it's the best thing for me not to be in heaven because of some thing I built up my character, like, if we can look at God in that way, I think it changes how we think about the judgment. But I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to what you said <laughs> yes. because the Bible says God's not willing that any should Don't perish. perish. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he actually wants everyone to come to Mount Zion, doesn't he? But he won't mm -hmm. force. <laughs> but not, <laughs> not with force, way. absolutely. We've yeah. got just like Haiti said, we've got a choice, choice to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Sabina. And I'm thinking of another aspect also of judgment that goes more along with what Pedro was sharing. If you've been wronged once in your life, you've really intended and wished that a judge would come to plead for you in your case. Mm. And I think that if any of us have experienced being unfairly treated or suffered some sort of uh, consequence of sin in society, all of us are hoping and looking forward for that day in which God will bring that to an end. Yeah. And I see also the judgment at the, as this place. Uh, even though we believe that God is going to forgive even the worst sins if we bring that to Him, the Bible also promises that not only He will grant that forgiveness, but that He will make some sort of healing take place, that all the things that we suffer, that we find that we were, you know, injustice in whatever circumstance, that He will bring healing to that. And I'm also looking forward to the judgment because of that aspect, Pastor Derek. You know, I've known of some people that they have suffered some injustice and mistreatment and um, you know, a lot of abuse goes on in the world. So uh, I think that's beautiful also to, to know that our God, He cares also about making things right. Sure. Not only saying, oh, I'm going to brush off all the, the misdeeds. I'm going to, He wants to provide also a healing for that as part of this judgment. And you know, I yeah. remember someone saying to me one time, why would I want to live forever? Mm -hmm. but what they don't understand, it's going to be a new heaven and new earth where righteousness mm -hmm. dwells, yes. right? Mm -hmm. yes. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, Gladys, could you read for us in Hebrews chapter 12 still, verses 25 and 26 about the Lord's voice shaking the earth and going to shake the heavens? Sure. I'm reading from the New International Version. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him, who warned them on, who warned them on earth, how much less will we, if we turn away from him who warns us, warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. <laughs> hmm. When did the voice of God shake the earth? Anybody? When did the voice of God shake the earth, Jason? Well, at Mount Sinai, uh, going back to this whole Sinai-Zion situation, when God gave the Ten Commandments and God met with the people, His voice shook the mountain and shook the earth where the people were. Would you read that for us in Exodus 19, verses 18 and 19? And then, Pedro, if you could read a, a parallel statement in Psalm 68, verses 7 and 8. Um, and, and what was the purpose of the shaking? Let, let's see what it says. I have the New King James Version here, Exodus 19, 18 and 19. It says, Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, and became louder and lower, louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. So here's everything shaking, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how does the psalmist, the, under revelation, revelation of the Holy Spirit, record that? Psalm 68, 7 and 8? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Psalm 68, 7 and 8. It says, O God, when you went before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, Selah, the earth shook, the heavens also drop rain at the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Hmm. Let's go back there again. Slaves just liberated. Uh, what is God trying to teach in that shaking of the earth? What do you think? Hmm. We know He loves us, right? Yeah. With an immeasurable and unfailing love. So He's not trying to teach us that He hates us. Mm -hmm. or that he wants to hurt us. Jason? 
Well, these were, uh, had been slaves in Egypt who ha were powerless. And so one thing God might have been trying to show is, look, I'm the one who actually has the power, the power to save you, the power to restore. So trust me, because mm -hmm. I actually can give you the power of freedom. Mm -hmm. so, so actually, a, a physical manifestation that God has the power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm over nature, mm -hmm. yes. uh, that he's yeah. going to take care of them. Yes, yes. Sabine? And also so that they could associate with the blessings they have been experiencing since they left Egypt. Because remember, it was not Moses who opened the sea for them to pass through. It was God himself who used Moses to do that. So I think it's a way to help them associate the things that I'm sharing with Moses here. It's not against Moses who is the one doing that. It's me through Moses to bring this word for you. And I like that thought of, of a manifestation of God's power, not to terrorize them, mm -hmm. but to actually offer hope, mm -hmm. right? Amen. That he's going to be with them. Yeah. I'm going to ask Haiti, and I'll come to Gladys your point. Haiti, there's a little book called Haggai. It's, it's right before the end of the Old Testament. I have a hard time finding it sometimes. <laughs> but chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, suggests that there is also a time coming when God is going to shake the heavens. But Gladys, your point first. Yes, uh, when we see physical manifestation of God's power, it just not only fills us with awe, but it kind of like make a connection, just like Savina was saying, in our brain that help us, a if we really trust that, we will make the decision for God. Like my grandma, she was resisting the, 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 the power of God, calling her heart to accept him. Because she's, she thought that because she drank coffee, she couldn't be in the church. So she reflected and she said, okay, if God will remove the desire for me to drink coffee, hmm. and that could have been, accept that could have been vodka or yes, rum anything. or but yes. something she felt she, she wasn't felt caring she, for her body temple. Exactly. So she said, mm -hmm. if God removes it. And the next morning she woke up and she didn't feel any desire. She was like, hmm, that's weird. The next day and after the end of the week, she, told, she called my father and said, I need to be baptized because if God can remove a desire from my whole mm. life, mm. Wow. then I need to accept him. Someone's wow. watching, that could be an addiction to pornography mm -hmm. yes. or an addiction to material possessions mm -hmm. or power that God is able to deliver us. You know, Jason, Amen. I want to come back to that um, point you were making earlier. And Shane, I see your hand raised there. Think during the ministry of Jesus, when Jesus showed his power over nature, mm -hmm. which was an evidence, there's several examples, an mm -hmm. evidence, if I can do that, I mm -hmm. can take care of you. Yeah. Give me a couple of examples, Jason. So mm -hmm. the one that comes to mind is when they were on the sea, he was with his disciples. He was sleeping, they were about to drown, and then he wakes up and he just says, uh, peace be still, and he completely calms the sea. Mm. And that was my second illustration. I thought of another one, but it was also by the sea when Jesus did a miracle multiplied and said the fish? it was it, it was when not he when the, he multiplied. It was when the miraculous, the miraculous catch of catch fish. Yes. Remember yes. that one? Yes. But you say there's another one, too. Yes. All the way through the ministry of Jesus, he's demonstrating God's power mm -hmm. and saying God can do this. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Jesus say somewhere, can he not also care for you? Yeah. You have little faith? Yes. So, so, yeah, he's able, isn't he? Shana? Yes. Yes, if his power can move the mountains, imagine what he can do for us human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, he controls the, the moving mountains. We don't see mountains move here on earth. And I think that that, in itself should have been a moment for the children of Israel to, to just say, wow. Right. Um, I mean, I mm -hmm. would tremble in fear and I'm sure they were too, but mm -hmm. it, it could also have been the assurance that they needed that, that that was his message to them that the world around you could be shaking and in turmoil. And because I am protecting you, you can be still, sure. you'll be okay. Haiti, let's go to that little book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 6 through 9, because the author to the Hebrews says, God has not only been shaking the earth, He's going to shake the heavens. Yeah. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, 
and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. So when is it that, this God, that God is going to shake the heavens? Hmm. What's that talking about? The desire of all nations. The second coming. coming. It's talking mm -hmm. about the glorious return of Jesus. Now there's yes, lots, the there's more Bible texts the about the return of Jesus more mm -hmm. than any other prophecy. So mm -hmm. there's lots of things we could read about mm -hmm. every eye seeing him and the trumpet sounding and the resurrection mm -hmm. of the righteous, right? Yep. But, mm -hmm. but heavens are going to shake. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes when the Lord is coming. Now it's interesting because we're going to go on now, Pedro, to Hebrews 12, 27 and 28, that while the heavens are shaking, the kingdom is unshakable. That's yeah. kind of an interesting contrast, isn't it? How does that read uh, in he Hebrews 12, verses 27 and 28? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 12, 12. verses 27 and 28. Okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Hebrews 12, 27, 28. It says, Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of the things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we, ha we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So mm. with the glorious return of Jesus, the desire of all the nations, what is going to be shaken out? Everything. Uh, fear. Sin is going to be shaken out. What else? What else is shaken? Oh, the earth. The current powers and authorities of the world. It, uh, Babylon is shaken, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Shaken. Fallen. Mm -hmm. The powers of this world are shaken. Mm. Yeah. Those who've not accepted Jesus, are shaking. Are shaking. Yeah. they cry for the rocks to fall yeah. on them, Hebrews yeah. in uh, Revelation 6. So a lot of things are being shaken at that time. Mm -hmm. So what is not shaken? <laughs> Who'd like to give me a, a thought? What's not shaken? Shana, can you think of one thing when everything's unraveling in terms of this present age, Christ is coming in glory, Mm -hmm. What is not shaken during that time? Well, I won't be shaken because my life is hid in Christ. And if I am with the one who is doing the shaking, then, then I'm okay, right? <laughs> so isn't there a Bible text in the Psalms, I've set the Lord always before me mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. because He is at my right hand, mm -hmm. I shall not, not be, be moved. Mm -hmm. moved or shaken. That's yeah. an old uh, gospel song, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Uh, when He is there. So, wonder of wonders, <laughs> when mountains are being shaken wow. and kingdoms are being shaken, yeah. mm -hmm. the people who stand with Christ mm. yeah. will yeah. not be shaken. Yeah. Is that right, Shana? Yeah. That's your testimony. What else? Yeah. What else isn't shaken when everything else seems to be shaken? Yes, Sabina? I would say that God's promises, you know, mm -hmm. even when we see things falling apart, we should know that his salvation will still come to pass, the judgment and the new heavens and new earth that He promised to us, that this is not going to pass. Mm. So all of His promises remain, we have an expression in English, steadfast mm. and sure. Mm. Yes. They're not going to be shaken no. uh, during that time with the glorious return. What else will mm. not be shaken? Yes, Jonathan. R related to that, just God's faithfulness. So, mm -hmm. just who He is, who He has shown Himself to be, and that we can rely upon that. Mm -hmm. And what about God's truth? Mm -hmm. yes. That's yeah. not shaken either, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, all of that, that image of heaven and earth shaking, reminds us of an ancient prophecy by the prophet mm -hmm. Daniel. I didn't have it in the outline, mm -hmm. but you remember the head of gold and the chest and arms of... Silver, silver and the yeah. belly bronze. Uh, bronze. Uh, bronze and the legs of iron. iron. You know those kingdoms, right? Yeah. Greece, Medo-Persia, oh, excuse me, Babylon, Babylon. <laughs> Medo-Persia, Medo Greece, Greece. Greece. Rome. 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 And Rome divided. Rome divided. And, and then what happens? Uh, back, 
Mm. You've got Haiti, your dream, right? Which kind of really got your attention. <laughs> well, this one really got Nebuchadnezzar's attention, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens? A stone, not cut out from hands, just came and smashed the statue on the feet. Mm -hmm. and, and, and pulverized, pulverized everything. everything. Mm -hmm. So everything was shaken, <laughs> except the rock. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right, Pedro? I, I, was, I was looking here in Matthew, trying to remember the verse exactly where, where it, uh, it, it says this. But Jesus says, those that, that, that fall on the rock will be saved, but those that are crushed by the rock mm. will be destroyed. So we want to be having the shake in our life today, shake off our sins by surrendering ourselves to God today because we will be able to stand with Him because of His righteousness. But those that have not hold upon the rock of Jesus, they will be crushed by it, as we saw in the uh, story of Daniel. So mm -hmm. we can have, uh, we have a choice today. Looking mm -hmm. at judgment, God's telling, would you want it to be uh, standing on the rock or you want to be crushed by the rock? Mm -hmm. And it's a choice we have to make every mm -hmm. day. Now, a new image in verse 29. Jason, if you could read Hebrews 12 and verse 29. A new image is introduced that isn't in Daniel's vision, right? In Daniel's vision, it's just a rock, as Gladys said, cut out without human hands that, mm. that strikes the feet of that image, pulverizes it, and then in some amazing way it's expands a mountain. Mountain. It's a mountain. And, and becomes a mountain that fills the whole earth. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a... Mm -hmm. This is obviously a, an image of the kingdom of God, which yes. will stand forever. But there's mm -hmm. a new uh, aspect here in Hebrews 12, 29. Jason? Mm -hmm. The New King James Version says in Hebrews 12, 29, For our God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How is that good news, Haiti? <laughs> that our God is a consuming fire. People say, the only consuming fire I can think of is a crematorium. You know, <laughs> that's where you get burned up, right? But, but don't forget the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, yeah. By the way, he yeah. wasn't the fire there. He protected them from it. But what, what do you think is uh, the author of Hebrews is trying to say here, Haiti? Our God is a consuming fire. Um. Well, we know that fire is used in certain processes, especially with metals, to refine them and to purify them and to bring out the the purest and best form of that. So I think it has to do with like the renewing of our own hearts and minds that happens when we connect to him. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's literal fire, it would not apply to those that are with God. <laughs> now, somebody mentioned earlier in our study that, that uh, there, there is a fire, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. So, does the way that we relate to God determine whether He is a purifying fire or we get burned up with everything else that gets been burned up in this wicked world. What do, you, what do you think, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm thinking of the verse. I don't, maybe you know where it is. Um, it says in Isaiah that, um, uh, that our, those who dwell among um, burning, it talks about burning stones and um, unquenchable fire, who can dwell amongst them. And then it, then it answers and says, he who hands pure heart and a clean hands, kind of this idea. But I, I think that, I mean, we talked about earlier that so many people have gone through terrible things and that seems like the fire picture is this, this, this burning up of that which of, of falsehood. There's, the world is full of falsehood that is messing up so many people's lives and truth will someday quench that, oh, burn up mm -hmm. that fire. What does the Lord God, who loves with an immeasurable and, and unfailing love, what does he want to consume and forever <laughs> destroy? Daisy? Sin. It's got to be mm -hmm. sin. Sin and period. Satan. I think I think really the answer is sin. Period. <laughs> but unfortunately, sin. finish the sentence. Unfortunately, Jason, we have a choice, and we can choose to cling to those things that will be burned up. Mm. Mm. And that's the tragedy, isn't it? If God's not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. yeah. that we would all come to Mount Zion, right, mm. with smiles, right? And be thankful that he is the judge of all yeah. because he's on our side. Yeah. And when things shake, instead of trembling, we go, our God's an awesome God, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But there is going to be a consuming of all that is evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we have to decide whether we're holding on or even worse if the evil is embedded inside of us mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. pedro and that's why when we look into the book of revelation god gave us this knowledge f ahead of time so we will know what the end will be mm -hmm. he loves us so much as i want you to know what is the result of both ends so you can make a a a, 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 a decisive choice for me because i love you now we look into the fire aspect God says, I'm trying to, he, he tells us in the Bible that the fire is there for Satan and his angels, for sin, death, and the false prophets. Not for the weak, for, for, for those that, the, for, for humans. Right. Not for humans. He says, I want that no one should perish, but all come to repentance. So he's, he's making his last appeal in the book of Revelation saying, come to me because mm -hmm. I have died for you. Hmm. You know, I have a big question. I probably shouldn't even say this because I'll get a thousand emails. <laughs> but I wonder even if there was a time during that polemic in heaven when angels who were teetering on the side of Lucifer, later called Satan, repented of that hmm. and turned back to the one true God. That would be Seems good logical. to know. <laughs> I just know this that God has made provision for all of His creation. Amen. Amen. Choose Amen. Well, you're gonna to come to Mount Zion, right? Amen. Yes. They choose Amen. to come to Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an unshakable kingdom. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how we respond to that invitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's almost like while I choose to come to Mount Zion, everything else is falling apart. Mm -hmm. You say, Derek, we're there. It's happening right now, <laughs> right? Everything's falling apart. Mm. But we're choosing to come to Mount Zion. Yep. What are some ways, appropriate ways to respond? I'm going to go to Hebrews 13, 15 and 16 first, and then come back to Hebrews 12, 28, because I, I think they come in that order. Shana, if you could go to Hebrews 13 for us, verses 15 and 16, and then we'll come back. And Daisy, if you would read chapter 12, verse 28 for us. Um, what are some appropriate ways we respond to this gracious invitation to come to Mount Zion? In other words, to accept the salvation the Lord provides. How does that read, Shana, in your Bible? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share for s with such sacrifices God is well pleased. And, and what you just read there in verse 16, Daisy, ties in, doesn't it, with Hebrews 12, verse 28. Yes, the New Living Translation says, Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping Him with holy fear and awe. So, two ways that we can respond or express our gratitude mm -hmm. for the goodness of God inviting us to come where? <laughs> to Mount Zion, right? Accept yeah. the salvation freely offered. Yeah. He's, the, he's the judge who's on our side. Yeah. He's the great and awesome God. W one way, according to Hebrews 13, is? Being thankful. Be thankful. Praise. Mm. Praise God. Praise yeah. Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Did you grow up in a family where there was a lot of praise to God? Anybody? Yep. Haiti, I see you she, <laughs> nodding. Did you grow? Tell, tell me about your family. Were there a lot of people using my favorite Hebrew word, hallelujah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how was it growing yes, up? Yes, in Spanish. Uh, well, every day we had worship. Uh, my parents made sure that we did that. And we always had prayer requests at the end and praises also. So every day we were constantly reflecting on the goodness of God. And when you're, when you're little... Um, you don't fully appreciate that. But as I got older, I, I really started to appreciate that. And um, there's a holiday in the United States called Thanksgiving, where you just stop and you give thanks to God and you eat a lot of food. And whenever we do that, we, we stop and uh, in my current family and we give thanks to God before we eat. Mm. And just recognizing that every good thing, everything we have actually comes from him, not from your hard work, mm -hmm. your deeds, or just coincidence. Everything is, is a gift from God. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm, I'm sure some others could testify that you were happy mm -hmm. growing up. Not <laughs> all of us grew up in a family where, where 
where there was just a lot of thanks and praise to God always being offered. Mm -hmm. So how do we learn to be more expressive? Jonathan, you've learned some lessons in your life. How do we learn to be more expressive? It happens in a relationship, right? We're in a relationship and, and we learn to express. You know, I've heard someone say, well, I don't have to say I love you. I told you 20 years ago when we got married. No, uh, a relationship flourishes when we express. Uh, how do we learn to be more expressive to God? That's a good question. So thankful to Him. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's it's having a real relationship where we, we spend time with him, where we meditate on his goodness. And it's it's um, it should be not just something we're we're, we're kind of doing because we're supposed to. It's it, by by living in his presence. I think there's something else we can do. What is it that might mm -hmm. help us to be more expressive in giving thanks, Gladys? Well, we recognize how God has been real to us. I think it motivates us to, 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 to give thanks to Him. Someone told us you can write a thankful list down and see it, but I think there's something else that can help us. You know, some years ago I went to Kenya, and, uh, and there held some meetings. And I love their choirs. They sing oh, like okay. this, you know. Um, and, and after a while, I was like loosening up just a little bit, you know, from being really stiff British, you know. Um, maybe we can learn from each other. Now, we're not talking here about exhibitionism, mm -hmm or being silly, but we ought to give thanks to God, yes, right? Yes. But there was one other aspect which you read in verse 16 of Hebrews 13, mm -hmm. which was reinforced besides expressing words, Jason. What was that? So service, doing good and sharing, doing helpful things for other people. Mm -hmm. yes. That's really practical, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How does that relate to our salvation, uh, by the way, that we've been invited to come to Mount Zion? How does that relate? Mm -hmm. Yes? I think that at the same extent that God has provided for us, and that's for free and of His grace and love, that we also should extend grace to others who are in need of So grace. it is our loving response? Yes. We're not earning God's mm -hmm. ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just earned your ticket to Mount Zion. No, no. Mm -hmm. We're invited by grace, mm -hmm. but we express our thanks mm -hmm. and, and we... We serve we others. Replicated. We show uh, mm -hmm. the same kind of love that's been shown to us. Yeah. Can you think of someone in the New Testament? We could go to the Old Testament too, but I'm thinking people who learned about Jesus, just mm -hmm. as we as New Testament Christians have learned about Jesus, that you just saw in her life, mm -hmm. notice I asked for a lady first, <laughs> <laughs> you just saw in her life, Shana, that mm -hmm. she was living just a, a life of giving thanks to God and serving others in the name of Jesus. Who comes to your mind? Dorcas. I think of Dorcas. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, that's a great illustration. How did she express her uh, thankfulness to God for His grace and salvation? Well, she was providing for the community in the way that the community needed to be provided for. And so she saw the need and she met it with the grace and love of Jesus, so much so that when she passed away, the community was distraught mm -hmm. um, and, and missed her presence. And so she, she was one person in the New Testament who sure. definitely demonstrated and, and gave that grace that she received from Christ. And for those who don't know the story, she wasn't just giving Bible studies, she was making clothing clothes. for mm -hmm. yes. people who needed. In fact, they brought some of the clothes, didn't they, Daisy? <laughs> right. Said, see, here's some of the things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, the Lord Jesus said, Dorcas, you're doing a great work. Let me raise you back to life again and use Peter to bring her back to life. Mm -hmm. Give me someone else, just, just a short example of someone you just see her life or his life, Daisy, just kind of expressing thanks to God that, that they've been invited to come to Mount Zion and, and serving uh, God, serving others with a glad heart. I'm thinking of uh, the woman with the alabaster box. Okay. Because she, um, when we read this, it talked about coming up with sacrifices to God. Mm. And she got an ex a very expensive perfume because she saw the value of what Jesus had done for her and she wanted to express her thanks and gratitude. And she came and poured it on his feet and used her hair to wipe it. And everybody, well, those standing around were condemning her like, this is a waste of money. But the sincere gratitude and thanks for what Jesus did for her, uh, saving her in her past, 
it, it, it brought her down to her knees to give thanks and praise and worship and sacrifice so much for it. You know why I love having an in-depth interactive Bible study? I never would have thought of that story because there's so many. But what a beautiful story expressing thanks with words but with also action. with actions. Gladys? I also think of Ananias, you know, loving when it's tough. He was called to go and minister to, to Saul after he, when he was blind. And I, I can imagine that out of the love that he had for God, hmm. you know, he humbly went and offered forgiveness and acceptance mm -hmm. into God's kingdom to Saul. And who mm -hmm. Saul became for God just because mm -hmm. of that example. That, that, there's a that story gesture. recorded in Acts 9, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it is an amazing story because at first he says, God, I think you're talking about the wrong person. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. that, that person's a terrorist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, he's my servant. And I love what, what Gladys has pointed out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the first words he says, Ananias, when he goes mm -hmm. and finds Saul on the street called Straight? Anybody brother. remember? Brother. Mm -hmm. You remember? Brother. Brother, brother, brother Saul. Saul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. He's come to Mount Zion. Yes. This man, Ananias, he's accepted the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Saul of Tarsus was ready to drag him in chains, mm -hmm. but he's become part of an unshakable kingdom. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. That was, I jumped when I said that. I should have stayed <laughs> solid, right? An well, unshakable kingdom. And he's giving a sacrifice of thanks to God in his mm -hmm. words and in his actions. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. What's the takeaway lesson, Jonathan? This is an important study today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. what, what would you say? What, someone's listening and saying, what does this mean for me today? I just think there's so many things in this world that are so messed up that are along the lines of the Pauls and the, um, the contentions and things that uh, need the uh, stability that God's kingdom is going to mm -hmm. bring, that's going to burn away the, the stuff in our own lives and, and in the society and provide mm -hmm. true peace and that we can have that now. We can, so we can, someone who says, yeah. I'm afraid, Jonathan, everything's falling apart, my, your answer would be, you're right, accept the unshakable kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I want to invite you to mm -hmm. yes. come to Mount Zion, right? right? Yeah. Daisy? I like Haiti's um, testimony that she said, just open the door. Open the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Open the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad you joined us for Hope Sabbath School today. This is really practical at the end of this book. It's talking about how to live as those who've been redeemed by our awesome Jesus. Amen. The book's all about Jesus, but, but make the trip to Mount Zion. Accept mm -hmm. what Jesus has done for you. And mm -hmm. then let your life express thanksgiving and service to God to bless the lives of those around you. Mm -hmm. Let's pray together. Father mm -hmm. in heaven, Right now, I want to appeal for someone who's saying, Lord, could you save me? The answer is yes. Open the door. Say, Jesus, save me. I'm going to take my walk to Mount Zion where, Jesus, you made a perfect sacrifice, provided for my salvation. And then, God, may we live a life of, of praise to you and service in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Zavisgal. I'm happy because Jesus has not only invited this little group to be part of the celebration at Mount Zion. He's invited all of us. Go out, oh, make the decision first, mm -hmm. and then go out and tell that good news to those around you.